Okay, somewhere you should be able to see that it says that it's recording. I'd like to look at the written assignment for that. So there's the details about the written assignment. You can download the written assignment here. So the written assignment in this case is going to involve three problems from the textbook. And uh, notice some comments here. This particular table that you need to have. You may want to include that, that table in the statement of the problem, or be sure that it's included, or that it's recreated in the R script. So what I'd like to do is, is do that process today. I looked at the written assignment. It often has some clues. And then there's the template, which uh, is set up to kind of get you started. In italics, I keep giving you some, some clues. Now, when you're looking at this, of course, this is not uh, an editable file as it is. It's not. Uh, what you need to do is click on these three dots over here and download that template. Okay. Then, then find in your system, my system will be different than yours, but find where you, where you've got those downloads. And if you have Word or some other piece of software, that uh, can just read that file immediately. I just double clicked on it. Uh, here I'm using LibreOffice. If you're using Word or, or OpenOffice or LibreOffice, then they could all be here. You can also copy this into your uh, Google Drive. We've got all of that. Let's come back to, to this problem 2.1.4. It refers to a table 2.1.7. So we need to find that table. I need to find the textbook. Remember that it's always in the overviews. So there is the chapter two remix. Uh, of course, I can, can read that chapter two remix here. The problem is that it's very difficult it, from here to be able to highlight things and copy and paste things. So once again, I need to download that. So in my system, it's showing that we downloaded it here. Find my download folder, find that uh, thing that we had and open it with the Acrobat reader or whatever your reader is for. Now I've got that, this document and it's searchable as a PDF file. So in, in problem 2.3.4, I need to find this table 2.3.7. Now when I do a control find 2.3.7, it's, it's more searchable. Okay, and there's one that's a graph, 2.3.7. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this table, 2.3.7. So there's my table. <coughs> now the table has the value of the home and rental values. So I need to mung that data. Compute, uh, Computer scientists and statisticians call that munging, M-U-N-G-I-N-G, or wrangling uh, the data, munging or wrangling the data. So we get it in a form that the computer can handle it, okay? I could begin to, to copy the values. I need to have a text editor, some, something, word note or notepad or, or even word, uh, I'm going to use, on my system, I'm going to use something called gedit. It's very much like uh, notepad. So here's my, my PDF that I'm reading with the PDF reader. There's my first column of values. Control, copy, control, V.
more values. Oh, shoot. I'm not going to be able to copy that next value. Okay. These two columns right there are really acting peculiar. Data scientists say that 80% of their time is spent munging data. So I'll copy that and paste that over here. 100 to 7904 should be out. 12 something should be out. And this one should be in. This is a very real issue in processing data. Okay. So I believe at this point I've got these first two columns of values. Let's try this column of values, control copy, and paste that in. You see, part of the problem was that whoever developed this document uh, got it looking the way that they wanted, but the structure of the document is difficult for a computer to read. And right now we're building this value vector. And what we need now is to be able to, to put commas, find and replace, a backslash in. Okay. So <clears throat> because there was a carriage return there, a backslash in, replaced all of those. I'm going to search for a comma and every place that there's a comma I'm going to put a comma and a space and replace all. So now that's looking a little bit nicer for value and make it into a vector. That took quite a bit of effort. Uh, I'm going to need to do that for rental as well. Then I've now produced this little bit of code, control copy, and put that into the compiler. So there's the value vector. When I look at the rental vector, I need to come to, to this document. That, oh, look at that. So I'm coming back to this editor now. Control V. And now I need to pick off all those rental values. What we wanted to do was get, get rid of that and that. That would be great, but for today, that's the best way that I could come up with. So that's my first set of values. Visually checking, it looks like that's right. Uh, of rentals. So now let me come over here and try. Ah, that's copy nice. Copy, paste. That paste those parts of the control copy, control paste. Finally, control copy. Control V for paste it back in. Control C and Control V usually work for me. Find and replace. And we learned earlier that if we used a backslash and, that would recognize where that carriage return is. At the and what we want to replace it with is a comma followed by a space. And replace all. When you're looking at this, you're saying, wow. Tremendous effort to get, but, but look what the effort would have been if we had to have typed all of those in by hand. I'll prepare this because I know that I want it to be a vector. Make it a vector with that C command. So I need to take that value, control copy. And so there's, there's my two uh, vectors. But once the vectors are there, then we can do all kinds of stuff. 
we could we could recreate that table. If I execute that data, it has restructured things in kind of a long format, and so this is much easier to to manage at this point. We've got this one long vector of the vec values and this one long vector of the rentals. We can plot the value compared to the rental. There it is, it's kind of scattered out. In general, it looks like the as the value of the home goes up, the rental value goes up. We can find the, the average, statisticians call that the mean, really. but that munging did take us some time. Remember that data scientists and computer scientists usually say that it's gonna take them 80% of their, of their work time in munging the data. One written assignment template. I need to go in here and say that this is me doing this one. Date that I'm doing it on September 9th, 2020. So this I can now remove because that's just coaching for me. Uh, create a scatter plot and state if there is a relationship between the value of the house and the annual rent value. Here is the R script. What we needed to do was plot the value and the rental. We probably should have a title to this, an own value predicting rental value. The X label is uh, home value. The Y label is uh, rental value. Let's see what our chart looks like. It's good to have a, a title. It's good to label your X and, and Y axes. So there's my R script. Control copy. Uh, here's the R script. Control V. Here is the output from the R script. So here I need to copy that image. I right click that and then just copied the image. Here's the R script. I'm gonna put this on a new page. Okay, so there's my R script and there's the result. I might want this a little smaller, I don't know. Okay. And now they ask us to state if there's a relationship. Does there appear to be a relationship to you? So I'm going to explain whatever I think is the right answer here. There seems to be this trend that as the home value goes up, the rental value goes up. We've only answered one of the problems, but it's uh, one that has some particularly challenging munging issues. Questions or comments? That's uh, pretty much all I had planned on, on looking at today. But um, I had a question about that, like how we copy and paste our R script. Would it be okay? Because there's a tool, it's called the snipping tool, and you could just take like a picture of your screen. So you would take the picture of the whole like R script or you could do like different sections of code that you want. Would that be okay to like copy and paste onto our written report, just like we do with like the bar plot, the pie chart? I would prefer that mm -hmm. you actually copy the code and put it into your document. That, if you do a, a snipping, then huh? yes, somebody can see it nicely, but, but then I can't, copy your code and oh, put okay. it in my R script and try it. But if it's, if it's formatted that other way, then I can actually copy your code and, and run it to verify that it's actually working. And I agree that snipping tool is kind of a nice one. Kind of take a little screenshot. I like to have this in a way that somebody else can actually use your, your code. Maybe we'll edit this and, uh, and try and make it available. Thanks everybody.